Scotland's seas are a public asset and an important resource for both our generation and the next. But just a fraction of 1% of Scots are divers who can be eyewitness to just what happens under Scotland's waves. Between 2013 and 2015, video seabed surveys were conducted around the south of Arran on different substrates at different depths. Here we give you three examples. To a diver, it's fairly obvious that the juvenile cod prefer the rich complex habitats like this one made up of feather stars, red and brown algae and sea squirts. However, these habitats are extremely vulnerable to scallop dredging. Just a few months later, these shots were taken less than 100 metres away from the earlier shots. In a different habitat, again we see small shoals of juvenile fish obviously preferring the more complex seabed that provides more feeding and cover. These shots were taken at the exact same site, but just two days after a scallop dredger had been operating in the area. In deeper water, over 20 metres, we see attached to the cobbles and pebbles fragile tunicates, hydroids, bryzones and sponges that attract a wide range of species from juvenile fish to octopus. These shots of the seabed are similar to how the Lamlash no take zone looked in 2004. This picture shows the dredge marks in the Lamlash Bay no take zone taken by a site scan sonar before designation. In September 2008, after a 13 year community campaign, Richard Lockhead, the Minister for Rural Affairs and the Environment, designated just 2.67 square kilometres, which became Scotland's first no take zone. For divers, Here's what can be seen today under the waves of the no take zone. It is little wonder that Scotland's recreational and commercial divers have been at the forefront in voicing their concerns over the devastating effects of bottom toed scallop dredges. To a diver, it's fairly clear where these juvenile fish, scallops and lobsters prefer to live. Our legislators now need to open their eyes to see the real impact of scallop dredging.